Hi everyone, I'm David White. Welcome to the fastest 24 hour news updates domestic and foreign news and latest news. Here, let's take a look at 10 of today's latest news. COVID 19 epidemic Austria and Denmark cooperate with Israel in vaccine production. Germany provides vaccine for Karlovy Vary region, Czech Republic. Hanoi, VNA 3 thirds. Austria and Denmark are planning to work with Israel on the COVID-19 vaccine in response to new variants of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, amid growing criticism of a delay in ordering, approving and distributing vaccines in the European Union (EU). According to the Vietnam news agency correspondent in Europe, in a statement dated March 2, the Prime Minister of Austria, Sebastian Kurz, said that the EU's purchase of the COVID-19 vaccine for member states is correct, but the European Pharmaceutical Authority, EMA, was too slow to approve and clogged the supply of pharmaceutical companies. We must therefore prepare for the emergence of new variants and should not depend solely on the EU for second-generation vaccines, the statement said. For his part, Danish Prime Minister Met Frederiksen also criticized the EU vaccine program, adding that Denmark and Austria are ready to act unilaterally to get the COVID-19 vaccine. Expected, this week, the prime ministers of the two countries will come to Israel to discuss Israel's experience in rapid immunization deployment. Vaccination rates in Israel, which contracted and approved vaccines by U.S. manufacturers Pfizer and Moderna, reached 94%, while in the EU it was only 7%. However, the vaccine cooperation plan between Austria, Denmark, and Israel is questioning the extent to which none of these three countries have the capacity to produce large-scale vaccines. Asterisk on March 2, Czech officials said 15,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine, funded by Germany, had been shipped to the Karlovy Vary region of the country. These vaccines, along with the existing 1,800 doses of the Czech government, will be distributed evenly to the most affected districts of the COVID-19 epidemic, Sokolov and Chabe. According to the Vietnam News Agency reporter in Prague, the medical agency in Karlovy Vary said that the first priority subjects to be vaccinated were teachers and people over 70 years old. The program is guaranteed to inject 250 teachers and 150 seniors per day. Figures from the Czech Ministry of Health show that up to this point, Nearly 16,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccine have been used in the Karlovy Vary region in the region with nearly 300,000 inhabitants. This is also an area where many Vietnamese communities live and many people have been infected. Vaccination has so far been restricted mainly due to lack of vaccines. The first large capacity experimental center in Karlovy Vary also started operating, capable of vaccinating 1,000 people slash day. Similar centers will also be established in Sokolov and Chabe, depending on vaccine availability. According to regional governor Karlovy Vary Petrukulenek, the supply of vaccines will help more people to be vaccinated and will also reduce the risk of spreading the disease in the border. COVID-19 epidemic, who will distribute 237 million doses of vaccine under COVAX Hanoi program, VNA three-thirds. Regarding the global vaccine sharing program COVAX, the World Health Organization, WHO, announced on March 2 that by the end of May, there will be 237 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine distributed to 142 countries. Join this program of the United Nations, UN. According to WHO, the above vaccine produced by the pharmaceutical company AstraZeneca and the Indian Serum Institute will be distributed in two batches, with the first wave in two to three months, and the second phase in May 4th to 5th. This is considered the next step in the program to provide COVID-19 vaccine to poor and low-income countries funded by WHO. This distribution process was activated last weekend with the first destinations being Ghana and Côte d'Ivoire. On March 2nd, Angola, Cambodia, the Democratic Republic of the Congo and Nigeria also received the vaccine distribution of COVAX. According to the plan, this year, the COVAX program will buy about 1.8 billion doses of vaccine for distribution. 
who Director General Tedros Adhanom emphasized COVAX is an unprecedented friendship program that will not only change pandemic developments but also change the way the world responds to future medical emergencies. Australia, President of Rio Tinto Group resigns after the scandal of destroying the ruins of the Aboriginal people of Hanoi, VNA three-thirds. Chairman of Australia's largest Rio Tinto mining group on March 3 announced his resignation to accept responsibility for the group's scandal that destroyed an ancient relic of the Aboriginal community to expand the mining scale. Iron ore. The fact that the Rio Tinto group blasted 46,000-year-old caves in the Jukin Gorge in Western Australia, which has been home to two Aboriginal Australian peoples, Putukunthi Karema and Pinikara since ancient times, has caused public backlash and investors' backlash. Rio Tinto President Simon Thompson said that although the group was very successful in 2020 thanks to the boom in iron ore prices, the scandal overshadowed the successes of Rio Tinto and as as president, I have to take responsibility. Before Mr. Thompson made this decision, the chief executive officer, CEO, of Rio Tinto and the two top managers of this group also resigned in September 2020 for similar reasons. The 46,000-year-old caves mentioned above are one of the oldest sites that indigenous Australians ever lived and are considered a sacred site of the Putukunthi Karema and Pinikara peoples. This is also where archaeologists have discovered the oldest Aboriginal artifacts of this country. Korea and the EU are committed to promoting security relations. Hanoi, VNA three-thirds. According to the VNA reporter in Seoul, the Korean Ministry of Defense office said that on March 3, the country's defense minister, Su Wook had a meeting with the European Union, EU, Ambassador Maria Castillo Fernandez in Seoul and discuss how to promote security cooperation including anti-piracy missions off Somalia. At the meeting, Mr. Su Wook and Ms. Fernandez exchanged assessments on the security situation on the Korean Peninsula and in the region, according to the South Korean Ministry of Defense. In addition, the two sides also discussed how to cooperate against piracy in the Gulf of Aden and surrounding areas, as well as plans to hold security discussions and promote visits of military officials. The two sides high level. Since 2009, the South Korean Chonghae unit has carried out anti-piracy missions in the Gulf of Aden off Somalia and has recently expanded its reach to include the Strait of Hormuz. At this meeting, Mr. Su Wook asked the EU to join the upcoming annual international security forum called the Seoul Defense Dialogue and the United Nations Ministerial Peace Conference to take place in May. 12 coming in Seoul. Ambassador Fernandez affirmed that he will make every effort to help establish peace on the Korean Peninsula as well as pledge to actively support EU activities to help tighten multilateral security cooperation. COVID-19 epidemic, Korean Prime Minister suggested to consider adjusting the vaccination policy of AstraZeneca. COVAX provided North Korea with more than 1.7 million doses of vaccine. Hanoi, VNA three-thirds. According to the Vietnam news agency reporter in Seoul, South Korean Prime Minister Chung sai kyun on March 3 instructed local authorities to review the issuance of AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccine for people aged 65 years. Above. Speaking at an interdisciplinary meeting held on the same day in Seoul, Prime Minister Chung sai kyun said the new study showed that the AstraZeneca vaccine was also effective for the elderly. Korea has not yet licensed this vaccine for people over 65, so Chung sai kyun asked the Korea Agency for Disease Control and Prevention, KDCA, to consider the issue again in the context of other countries have also adjusted licensing with the vaccine. Prime Minister Chung sai kyun cited France recently licensed the AstraZeneca vaccine for people aged 65 to 74 while Germany is evaluating the use of this vaccine for people aged 65 and over. Earlier, the UK Department of Public Health on March 1 published the results of a practical study showing that the AstraZeneca vaccine is highly effective in reducing COVID-19 infection in the elderly, 70 years and older. Up. In a private interview with TBS Radio, Korea, on the same day, Prime Minister Chung sai kyun continued to confirm his determination to strictly follow the vaccination plan to ensure the goal of forming community immunity. 
next November. He added that the inclusion of teachers in immunization priority groups needs to be positively considered especially as Korea is looking for ways for all students to go to school. According to new data updated by KDCA Korea, there were 444 new cases of COVID-19 in the past day, including 426 cases of infection in the community, bringing the total number of cases in the country to 90,816 people. The number of new infections has rebounded to 400 per day after South Korea confirmed more than 90 cases out of nearly 4,000 foreigners living in the city of Dongducheon, in the province of Jiangi, 40 kilometers north of Seoul. Calculated against SARS-CoV-2 virus. In addition, other small-scale collective infections still occur that have not decreased the number of new infections. Asterisk meanwhile, North Korea will be provided with about 1.7 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine by May through the global vaccine distribution mechanism, called COVAX, initiated by the United Nations. Specifically, according to this allocation plan, a total of 1,704 million doses of AstraZeneca vaccine will be issued to North Korea from February to May 2021. These doses will be enough to give about 852,000 people, provided one person needs two shots. Previously, COVAX said it would allocate about 2 million doses of vaccine to North Korea in the first half of this year, but the plan appears to have adjusted. In the same period from February to May, Korea will also be provided with about 2.1 million doses of AstraZeneca vaccine and 117,000 doses of Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine through the COVAX mechanism. To date, North Korea has confirmed that there are no cases of COVID-19 and has also soon implemented rapid and strict measures to prevent pandemics such as border control. China became the largest FDI investor in Malaysia. Hanoi, VNA three-thirds. On March 3, Malaysia's Ministry of Investment and Development, MEDA, said that by 2020, China would become the largest source of foreign direct investment, FDI, in Malaysia. According to the Vietnam News Agency reporter in Kuala Lumpur, in 2019, Malaysia recorded FDI capital up to 164 billion ringgit, 40.41 billion US dollars, after approving 4,599 projects in the fields of manufacturing, services, and initial investment. Head. However, by 2020, FDI will only reach 15.85 billion US dollars, accounting for 39.1% of the total value of approved investments in the context that domestic direct investment accounts for the majority, 60.9%, equivalent to $24.41 billion. Meta statistics show that China, Singapore, and the Netherlands are the three largest FDI countries in Malaysia, mainly investing in the general economic zones, accounting for more than 50% of the total approved FDI in Malaysia. Year Among key economic sectors, manufacturing ranked first in the total approved investment capital in 2020, reaching 22.5 billion US dollars of which 62% 13.97 billion US dollars came from FDI China remains the leading investor in the manufacturing sector in Malaysia contributing 4.3 billion dollars of the total approved foreign investments in this sector making it the largest source of foreign investment in the manufacturing sector for 5 consecutive years Translation COVID-19, Japan considered extending the emergency situation in Tokyo and three neighboring prefectures. Korea continues to support online religious activities. Hanoi, VNA three-thirds. According to the VNA correspondent in Tokyo, the governors of four capital cities in Japan are considering proposing Prime Minister Suga Yoshihai to extend the emergency because of the COVID-19 acute respiratory infection epidemic in the area by two week. Accordingly, scheduled on the afternoon of March 3, Tokyo Governor Yuriko Koik and his counterparts from Kanagawa, Chiba, and Sagatama prefectures will meet to discuss this issue. Before that, on March 2, Ms. Yuriko Koik, Governor of Tokyo, 
was cautious about lifting the emergency in the metropolitan area as planned this weekend even though the number of new infections here is currently downward trend. Meanwhile, Mr. Kensuke Morita, governor of Chiba, urged the government to be on the lookout for signs of a recurrence of the epidemic. For his part, Prime Minister Suga said the government would wait until the last minute before making a decision whether to lift the emergency in the Tokyo metropolitan area. As expected, the government of Japan will meet on March 5 to make a final decision on this issue. Japan declared a state of emergency in the capital Tokyo and three neighboring prefectures within a month on January 7. Thereafter, the scope of the emergency situation was expanded to 11 provinces. However, in February 2021, Prime Minister Suga lifted a state of emergency in Takaji, Gifu, Ike, Osaka, Hyogo, Kyoto, and Fukuoka prefectures, while maintaining a state of emergency in the capital, Tokyo and nine other provinces and cities to March 7. Meanwhile, Japan's neighbor South Korea said that, with new COVID-19 infections continuing to appear across the country, South Korea's Ministry of Science and Information Technology said it continued to pull long-term support of online religious activities for the people until April 2021. The Korean Ministry of Science and Information Technology provided the first support of online religious activities to the public in April 2020 by supporting the necessary data packets and networking platforms for the This Country's Religious Organization encourages people to conduct personal religious meetings to avoid the spread of the COVID-19 epidemic. In addition to measures to support religious activities, the ministry also plans to provide 100 GB of data to small businesses and help cover the data costs of online educational content for low-income student households.